In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the glitch Photoshop action. And the way it actually works is you open your photo, you simply brush over your subject with the color and just play the action. And here is the effect that the action creates. As you can see what the action does, the action creates this abstract glitch effect. And the results that you get are fully layered, so there is a lot of options for customizing the results. And the text here is a fully editable text layer, so you can use your own text, your own font, and make any other uh, text changes. You can also very easily colorize the result and randomize uh, the colors if you like. Also, the action is made so that every time you run the action, you will get unique results. So you will always get unique glitch variation, and you can create an unlimited number of results. All right? So let me just close these two windows now. Before you start using the action, there are just a few things you should check um, just to make sure that the action will run uh, properly. So the first thing you should check is that your photo is a background layer, so it should be called background, and here have this little lock icon. And in the case if you have something like this or anything else, you just go to layer, new, and choose a background from layer, All right? Then click on this menu icon over here, choose panel options, and make sure that you get this option here, the get copy to go by layers and groups checked. Then go to the image mode and make sure your photo is the RGB color mode that with Canon. You can also check the image size from here. So for best results, you should use the images that are around from 20 to 40, 45, 100 pixels wide or high. All right. So to load the action, just go to Window, Actions. Click on the menu icon over here, Load Actions, and just select the action inside the folder, choose load, and the action will appear here uh, in your actions panel. When you open the folder, you'll find three actions here, All right? So now to load the brush, you can just pick a brush tool and just click right click anywhere inside the canvas, click on the gear icon and choose import brushes. And now again, just choose the brushes file uh, from a folder and choose load and the brush will appear here uh, in the Glitch Brushes folder. All right. So all you have to do now is just go to Layer, New Layer, to create a new layer. Name it Brush, and it's very important that you spell this correctly, so all letters lowercase, because otherwise the action won't work. And just choose OK. Now hit B on the keyboard again to select the Brush tool, right-click anywhere inside the canvas, and just pick some salt brush. You can use any color here, color pick doesn't matter, and simply just brush over your subject with a color, just like that. And I've already done the brushing before. All right, here it is. So what's important is that you have this brush layer selected while you're brushing over your photo. So in this way, you're going to have this color fill on the brush layer, all right? So as you can see, not here to be precise with brushing at all. Just quickly and simply brush over your subject, and all you have to do now is just select the glitch action inside the folder and click play. The action will stop a few times with the messages, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to fasten the video here, and I'm going to get back uh, when the first message shows. All right, so here's the first message, and it says, in the next pop-up window, you need to define a new pattern, name the pattern glitch, and choose OK. Choose continue to proceed. So choose continue and make sure just to name this pattern uh, glitch like this. And all you have to do is to just choose OK. And here's the last message, it says, in the next pop-up window, click on the pattern thumbnail to open up the pattern picker. Then select the pattern you have previously defined and choose OK. Choose continue to proceed. So choose continue. And now here you can just open this uh, pattern picker and just make sure you select the pattern you have just uh, defined and all you have to do is just click OK and they should continue to work. So I'm going to fasten the video here again and I'm going to get back as soon as the action is finished and then I'm going to go through all the layers to show you how each layer works and how can you customize the effect. All right, so the action has just finished. So I'm just going to close the actions panel for now and I'm going to expand a little bit this uh, layers panel. All right, so the first thing you probably want to do each time you run the action is to just quickly close down all these folders. So how can you quickly do that? So just hold control and dial buttons for PC or command option for Mac. And while the glitch folder is selected, you just click on this little arrow here. And this way, we're going to close down all the folders. So what they're going to do now is just going to start customizing these effects from the bottom. So what they're going to do is just going to hide the overall sharpening layer. For now, I'm going to explain you uh, later why. All right. 
So the first layer that we got here is the background color. So what you can do, you can hide this layer if you wish to reveal your original photo background, or you can leave it on. You can play with the opacity. So to change the opacity, you can just click on the word opacity and drag it aside, or you can move this slider here, left or right. And what you can also do is you can double click on this color box here and you can choose any color that you like for the background. You can always pick some color from the photo. All right, it is gonna leave it default. So this is just the main uh, subject layer. If you wish to remove some parts of the subject, you can select these uh, layer mask. You can pick a brush tool, just pick some uh, soft brush, set foreground color to black, and you can hide some subject details if you like, right? And you can also change the opacity of the subject. Now, next what we got are the details. So we got the uh, highlight details, we got the inner details, edge details, and the uh, outer details layers. So what these layers does is they're creating uh, these uh, glitch details. So this folder here is, uh, has two layers and both of these create the glitch effect over the highlights area of your photo. So now what you can do is you can click on this layer thumbnail, you can move this effect uh, around if you want to move these shapes. Uh, and what you can also do is you can hide any part of these uh, details by brushing with a black color into this layer mask, just like that. And what else you can do is you can uh, expand the layer here uh, and just double click on the pattern overlay. And now what you can do is using the move tool, you can just click and drag anywhere inside the canvas to position a different part of the pattern uh, over the area where this layer is visible. This is going to be more noticeable with the other layers that I'm just going to show you. Now, so I'm just going to leave these two layers default. What you can also do is you can change their opacities if you like. All right? So these are the inner details. And as the name says, these layers are giving most of the details in the inner area of the subject or actually in the brush uh, layer area. So if I just move here, you're going to see uh, uh, large difference, so you can here choose which part of the photo, uh, the pattern that's created from the photo to be visible for this shape. Right? And you can always uh, snap the origin of the pattern to the default position. Right, so I'm just gonna position it like this. What you can always do is you can hide some layers to see how they affect the, the photo and if you wish to customize these or not. All right, so here we got the edge details, and here we got the outer details. Right, so these four here are the smart objects. Right, so how you customize these is you just double click on this layer thumbnail, which is okay. And here you can just double click on the pattern overlay and just adjust the uh, pattern as you like. You choose okay, then you just press Control S or we go to File Save, close this file and the changes will be automatically uh, updated here, right? And I'm just going to double click on this one. All right, just like that. You can change the scale of the pattern. So they are all randomized and you can change the scale individually for each layer if you like. Right, just gonna leave the default. So you can also change the opacity. You can use the uh, layer mask as I previously said for uh, brushing any part of these layers if you don't like it. So you can even select the whole folder if you wish to delete all layers inside this folder. And you, when you start brushing, you're gonna start removing these details. 
all right? And here we got another details layer. It says add more details. So when you open the folder, you'll find two layers here. And you'll see that these layers are really going to reveal a lot of details of your uh, subject. So what you can do is you can uh, change their opacity if you like. To reveal even more of the subject. Right, I'm just going to leave it default. So these two layers are just going to colorize these details with your original uh, photo layers. All right. And here we got the two glow layers. We got the vertical glow and we got the horizontal glow. So what you can do is you can open the folder and you'll see that this effect is also layered. So all layers inside the horizontal glow layer uh, folder are going to create the different horizontal uh, glows. So here we got the different vertical glow layers. So what you can do is you can turn off the whole folder or just a specific layers inside the folder and you can change the opacities here. And you'll also notice that these two folders have the layer masks. And when you open the properties panel, you see that the density of the layer mask is set to 50%. So the layer mask is uh, removing these glow layers over the brush layer area, but for the 50%. Right, and if you shift click on the layer mask to disable it, I'm gonna reveal the full glow effect over the subject. Right, and here we got the main glow layer. What you can do is you can change this layer opacity. All right, and next we got here is the reveal original subject. So when you open the folder, we have the reveal original subject layer. So what you need to do is to select these layer mask. You can just zoom in and pick a brush tool. And you can now use some of the glitch brushes uh, that came with download. I'm gonna use some of these here, right? And just gonna change the size of the brush using the square brackets uh, on the keyboard. And you just set foreground color here to white. I'm just gonna brush a little bit here Just a little bit to reveal more of the uh, subject details in uh, these areas. Just a little bit to create the clarity. And what you can do again here, you can um, change the opacity if you like. All right, and the next we got here is the text layer. So when you double click on the text layer, you'll uh, be able to expand this uh, text box. So what you should do is you can uh, just expand it to cover the whole canvas. And you have the text here. If you press Control A on the keyboard, Command A, you just uh, change the size of the text. You change its color to white so you can better see the text. And I'm just going to use uh, this font here, All right? And I just have some uh, random text. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm just going to copy and paste the text to cover the whole canvas. So what you can do is you can use uh, your own text here. And you can uh, change the font, the font style, font size. You can literally make any. Uh, changes to the text. All right, just like that. So what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to change the text color. So I'm just going to pick some color from the subject. Something like this. Okay, and you'll notice the text is visible only over specific areas. When you just alt or option click on this layer mask, you'll see where the text is actually visible. And what you can do is if you wish to hide the text over any area, you can simply brush with a, uh, with a black brush. So you can use the usual soft brush 
or you can use some of these glitch brushes if you like all right or what you can also do you can even make a selection of the area where you wish to remove the text and you just go to edit fill and just fill the selection with a foreground color make sure your foreground color is set to black and that you have the layer mask selected here press ctrl command d to deselect and you can easily remove the text or some areas and what you can also do is if you wish to choose where the text will be visible is you can just right click on the layer mask and choose delete layer mask then just click here to create a new uh, blank layer mask and press ctrl command d on a keyboard to invert it so now text is not visible anywhere and now you can just pick some of these two layers uh, two brushes and just um, set from color to white and simply brush wherever you wish to reveal uh, the text you can just random click like this all right Just like that and the next we got here is the texture so just gonna zoom in all right so what you can do is you can change the texture opacity I'm just gonna leave it default and I forgot to mention you can also change the opacity of the text here I'm just gonna drop it down something like this all right maybe a little bit more and the next we got here is the colorize uh, color look layer and when you open the folder you'll find the colorize layer it says increase opacity so as soon as you start increasing the opacity you're gonna start colorizing uh, the result so what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna drop down the opacity of this layer and now here we got the randomized color layer so you double click this layer thumbnail and when you start moving the slider around you're gonna start getting a lot of different uh, randomized color uh, combinations so what I'm going to do is just gonna set it like this okay you can also then control the opacity of this main folder here and the next we got is the word contrast so to adjust the contrast you just change the opacity all right then here we got the vibrance you double click here and using these two sliders you can increase the vibrance and the saturation all right and the next we got the overall brightness when we double click you can adjust the brightness here using these five sliders so this slider is set to 10 by default to fade a little bit the shadows so this side is fading the shadows this one is going to fade the highlights you can use this one to boost the shadows this one to boost the highlights and this one here is going to affect the midtones all right this is going to leave it default and last we got the overall sharpening layer so if you made any changes to the photo uh, if you customize the fact what you need to do is to create this layer again because when you zoom in you will see that this layer when I start moving it, it has these all these lines and edges that are giving the sharpening so if you update the look uh, of the photo and uh, make any changes to the design you need to update this layer as well so how can you quickly do that to just uh, select the update sharpen action click play and then what you can do is you can adjust the sharpening by changing the opacity here leave it default all right and what you can uh, also notice is that there is another action here it says rasterize layers so as all these layers have these editable pattern overlays uh, that can be very uh, demanding for the computer so what you can do is if you don't want to customize any of these anymore you can just run the rasterize layers action computer is just going to run much more uh, smooth and and better once the uh, all the layers are rasterized all right so what we got uh, next here is a brush layer that you made at the beginning of the video so as I mentioned the action is made so that every time you run the action will get unique result even if you use the same brush area so if you just delete this whole folder run the action again 
uh, what you're going to get is the unique uh, variation, right? You always get unique these uh, glitch details uh, variation that you can then uh, further customize. And let's just quickly check the before and after effect. So this is the before, this is our brushed area, and this is the after. Right, so I hope you understood everything, but if you still need any help or you got any questions, feel free to contact me anytime via my Invato profile page. Thanks for watching.